We're inside the Western Science Center. I'm here with Dr. Dooley. All I have to say is, wow. <laughs> a great place, we're proud of it. Tell me, what's behind us right here? Well, this is Max. This is the largest mastodon ever found in California. Um, and it's one of the uh, best preserved mastodons ever found in California. We found more than 10% of Max's skeleton. And you can see a cast of them um, on this panel back behind us. Max's original bones are in this pedestal. So we put the original bones under glass to protect them and we made replicas of them that we can put out so you can get up really close to them and see what they look like. So when you say 10% of him was found, it, I, forgive me, but is that a lot? That's, uh, that's a lot for around here. Okay, yes. okay. That's enough for us to get a good idea of how big Max was, whether he was a male or female. It turns out uh, Max was a male. Um, wow. We can say certain things about uh, uh, events he experienced during his life. It looks like Max got into some fights, for example, because he's got some injuries we've been able to document. So we can say a lot about wow. an animal with only 10% of the skeleton. Wow, so we are, we're in Hemet, and we're at one of the ends of Diamond Lake, if I'm, am I saying that correct? Yeah, Diamond Valley Lake. Diamond Valley Lake. Yeah. And that's why this museum is here, and that's why all these fossils are here. Uh, back in the 1990s, Diamond Valley Lake Reservoir was being constructed, and that involved building a highway and several really large dams. Um, as they were building the footings for those dams, um, they started finding first archaeological artifacts from people that lived in this valley in the past. And then as they went deeper, they started finding fossils from Ice Age animals. So when it was all said and done, more than a million artifacts and fossils were recovered. And this museum was built to house those specimens. Wow. And we're not talking about a small museum. This is huge. How big? Um, this is, uh, well, again, we started off with that million specimens yeah. um, from that excavation. Since that time, we've grown to take in a lot of other remains. We're now the repository for archaeological and paleontological remains for all of Riverside County. So we've taken in tens of thousands of uh, fossils and archaeological artifacts since the Diamond Valley Lake excavations. This is amazing. And when you walk in, they're everywhere. They're right up, they're right there, and they're below our feet. <laughs> What's below us here? Yeah, this is a reconstruction of part of the excavation. Of course, the original sites are under the lake now. So what we did in this uh, display is took the bones that were excavated and reconstructed them more or less into their original positions the way they were found in the lake. Most of what's be beneath us is another one of our mastodons. This is little Stevie. Um, it was actually the most complete mastodon we found here. We found almost half a little Stevie skeleton. Wow. Um, there are some bones from other animals in here as well because mastodons are not the only thing found in this deposit. We have uh, almost 90 different species of animals that were found in these Ice Age deposits here. Is there a difference between a mammoth and a mastodon? Uh, there is. Mammoths and mastodons are related to each other, but they're kind of cousins to each other. Uh, mammoths are very closely related to living elephants, um, especially to the uh, to Asian elephants. Uh, mastodons are a much more distant type of elephant, and you have to go back about 25 or 30 million years before you find a common shared ancestor between mammoths and mastodons. Okay. So if you saw them walking around, you would know they're both elephant relatives. Yeah. But when you get down into the details, mastodons are much more distantly related, and they belong to a family of elephants that's completely extinct now. More than half the mastodons ever found in California came out of this valley. Um, and in fact, for Ice Age deposits in general, the only place in California that has more Ice Age fossils than what was found here is at Rancho La Brea, the tar pits in Los Angeles which have been excavated for over 100 years. Dr. Dooley, what are we looking at here? This is our demonstration prep area. This is out on the exhibit floor, and we bring fossils out here that still need to be cleaned and let our, vis uh, let our visitors watch as our museum staff and volunteers work on cleaning some of these fossils up. Um, some of the Diamond Valley Lake fossils have never been completely cleaned, and we're bringing in new specimens all the time from various construction projects across Riverside County. Um, so those things will come in here, the sediment will get removed, the bones sometimes need to be glued and stabilized to, to make them strong enough to actually move them around. It's funny, because you say a million fossils have been found. Fossils and artifacts, yes. A and artifacts. Mm -hmm. I can't even fathom how long that's going to take you to complete all those cleanings and fixings and whatever you have to do to them. It'll be longer than I work here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, long time. So museums have to think in those terms. I mean, part of our, our role as a museum is to make sure those specimens are safe. And that's our, our first duty to those specimens, is to make sure that they're here and stored and protected. Um, there will be people long after everybody that's working here now is retired that are still working on these same collections. Wow. Now, when, when they were found or excavated, 
What does that process look like? Are they casted like this, or how did that, does that look like? Um, well, this is a, a good example. This is a, uh, a storage jacket. The field jackets look very similar to this. So when a fossil is dug up in the ground, actually this is a field jacket right here. You oh, see okay, this, this burlap right here. in here? Yeah, so this is the way it came out of the it's ground. It's like a cast almost. Well, and that's what you do to a, a broken arm when you went to the doctor to get a cast, and so we do to broken fossils in the field. So when we dig these things out, they're far too fragile to just yank them out of the ground and carry them away. They'll disintegrate. So we wrap them in burlap and plaster. We essentially make plaster bandages for them. Mm -hmm. Then we bring them back to the museum. We cut those um, plaster jackets open and then clean and glue the bone back together under controlled conditions. How long would it take to, or how long is it going to take to actually clean all this up and cut away the jacket? Um, we've been working on this one for a while. We're doing them at a pretty low rate out here on the exhibit floor. But if we put somebody on this doing nothing but this bone, that's what they were doing all day long, they could probably prepare a bone like this in maybe two weeks. So what do you do, just take a hammer and start hitting it? No, I'm, I'm totally <laughs> kidding. I'm just, there's a hammer in front of me and I, no, I guess not, huh? Uh, no, most of the cleaning is done with uh, dental picks, the same thing that the dentist would use as a dental office to clean your teeth. That's why it takes so long, by the way. Yeah. You need to get something bigger. Well, these bones are fragile. Imagine what your bones are gonna look like after they've been in the ground for 30,000 years. Oh my gosh, so, no. It's asking a lot of them to sit sure. uh, and poke at them. So what is this work area over here? Same same thing? Uh, it's the same uh, same thing. We use the sandbox mostly when we're gluing together big specimens. Because the bones are unusual shapes and they're still fragile as we glue them back together, we need the bones to be evenly supported as the glue setting. So we put them in the sandbox so that they're supported across their entire bottom surface. You have a big kids area, uh, open kids area over there where they get to be like put on a, a white coat. Right, that's our, uh, our rotating exhibit gallery. Okay. Um, and so the current exhibit in there, and we run this exhibit every summer, is uh, called Shapes, Sights, and Sounds. That's an exhibit that really focuses on younger kids and gives them a chance to just kind of experiment in a playground sort of setting. Mm -hmm. um, that exhibit um, space rotates three times a year. Okay. And we have another rotating exhibit that rotates twice a year which means uh, five times every year we're opening a new exhibit on the building, so stuff changes changes out here all the time. This is a pretty unique theater. This is our uh, in-the-round theater. We use this space to show um, videos about the life that used to live here during the Ice Age and uh, how we learn about that stuff. We show a documentary about the construction of the lake and all the artifacts and fossils that were found during that process and how they were actually excavated. Um, we also use this as our lecture hall. We have a very active uh, guest speaker series. We have about 15 lectures a year that are held in here. On Our California, our goal is to show you where to go, what to do, and what to see. At this place, we're showing you what's to see, but like we said, it's not necessarily what the public's going to be able to see all at once. Right. Um, with a museum as, as big as the Western Science Center is, our collections are far too large to put them all out on exhibit at one time. And some specimens are not really suitable for exhibit. They're either too fragile to put on display, or while they may have scientific value, they might not actually look very interesting in some cases. Um, so our first role as a museum is to provide a repository for these collections to make sure that they're safe um, into the future so that people can see them in exhibits, so that researchers can study them and they can serve whatever needs we need out of those specimens and you know, well into the future. So how often will you change out what's in the museum? Well, we have uh, two different rotating exhibit spaces in the museum. Um, between them, it means we open five new exhibits each year. So behind me, just laying on the ground, we have, what, giant tusks? Yeah, this is the, uh, the oversized portion of the collection, the stuff that's too big to put in cabinets. Um, wow. Most of these are mammoths and mastodons. Um, they came from the Diamond Valley Lake excavation. So right here behind you is a mastodon jaw. Uh, and a mastodon tusk. We actually had this jaw out on exhibit um, in 2015, 2016 in one of our temporary displays. It was out for six months. Um, as far as I know, that was the first time it had ever been on exhibit. Oh, wow. Um, we have part of a mastodon skeleton back here. We have some horse skeletons. There are some bison bones. Um, all kinds of different things. Well, obviously, you can see an amazing collection out here at the Western Science Center here in Hemet.